Hey y'all, Gregor here with another deck guide. This week we got some fantastic lists that came from the Masters Tournament. All of these lists we got from Pulse Glazer. The one that I ended up enjoying the most comes from Kazuma. So we ended up getting a Arashim list from Kazuma, a Clog Cersei list from Kazuma, and then an Eva Junk list. I ended up liking the Arashim list the most, specifically because of the changes since the OTA. And I haven't really touched Arashim since Tucker's Arashim Tournament. So I figured we would give it a go and it was actually crazy strong. It did really well. New Loki feels busted within the new RSM list, and it runs a lot of other just very strong cards, and the opponent has a tough time dealing with just the fact that you have ramp off the get-go. You have a lot of different options available to you, a lot of different play lines, and you can work with the cards that you have. Also, the fact that Loki now reduces the size of your deck it actually feels like a buff, because now Darkhawk is not a counter to RSM, and you're getting the cost reduction off draws. You can pull Loki on two. It's wild. Give it a go. Let me know what you think. If you haven't, please remember Remember to like, subscribe, comment, do all the things, engage with the video. That way more people get pushed out to them. If you're able to watch the whole video, it helps out immensely. We're pushing for YouTube partner and uh, we're trying to get our watch hours up. I think we need about 1.6K more hours and then we can apply for YouTube partner. So thank you all for your support and thank you for watching. Like I said, this deck is based around Arashem primarily. I had to put the cool border on Arashem. And this is my personal favorite of his variants. Works very, very well. Arashem still feels busted. I don't know. I feel like the OTA changes they made didn't really fix the problem of Arashem. It's still an issue and he presents a unfair... It feels like an unfair advantage that your opponent has that you have trouble competing with. More so, he feels like he has more tools available to him. But enough about me yapping about the OTA and things like that. Let's get into the actual deck. So this deck by Kazuma, which was one of the decks used within the Masters Tournament that he won, he actually had to use three different lists. This is just the one that I enjoyed playing the most out of the ones that were available to us. Runs Shadow King, Agent Coulson, Copycat, Loki, Shang-Chi, Claw, Vision, Doctor Doom, Eliath, Mockingbird, Magneto, and Arashem. Shadow King came in clutch many times. I was able to Shadow King and Shang-Chi last turn if I needed to, often being a game-winning opportunity. Agent Coulson still has value even if he is no longer used within the Loki package the same way. We're no longer Agent Coulsoning to get cards so we can transform our, our deck, or sorry, our hand into our opponent's opening hand. We are now Agent Coul Coulsoning to get the option for the uh, four and five cost card that he gives us. Copycat, still insane value. One of the best three cost cards we've seen in a while. I would put her up there with Nocturne in terms of just super valuable three cost cards. I think both Nocturne and Copycat have taken away Red Guardian's place as best three cost card. They are, it's really, really tough to compete with how much value they give you in that slot. I think uh, Marvel Boy will be really helpful within Zulus in the three cost slot, but if you're looking for flex options, Copycat and Nocturne are the way to go. Loki, still really, really great. You can play Loki on two with this list, which feels very unfair. But you know what? Use it while you can before RSM. Maybe eventually RSM will get a buff. Who knows? Shang-Chi, still the best tech option in the game. Can deal with those cards that go crazy tall. Claw is also something you can throw down. Put, uh, You could put eight extra power into a lane. Your opponent has to deal with that eight power. And it's very tough to compete with. He puts down 12 power altogether on a five, which is also like ridiculous value. Vision, a card that can move, also makes it very hard for your opponent to pin down where you're going to lay down that power in the last turn. Dr. Doom, go wide with your stuff. Eliath, also a game winner. This deck is pretty good at taking prio early because you have that advantage of extra energy. Mockingbird, still really solid. All the different cards that you get from Arashem lower the cost of Mockingbird, so you can usually get her for much less than six. Magneto, again, another tech option to move your opponent's cards out of the way and potentially get you that dub. And then Arashem, who ties this whole list together. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Also, I want people to explain to me why I, what deck people are playing and why I lose. I'm trying to get better. So this isn't my leash, just so you know. Dude is so good. Hold on. Bloomboro? Fantastic. I actually just did a ad for Bloomboro, a specific drop set from, uh, what is it called? Secret Lair? I think we just do Black Swan because we can. But let's just play Chavez for free next turn. Yep. Thank you for that follow. Welcome on in. Follows are anonymous, so if you're lurking, feel free to keep lurking. But if you would like to say hello, feel free to say hi. I play mono red because it's cheap to build around and it's the most hated deck. I think mono blue is the most hated deck. No? 
Yeah, the new set has been amazing. Bloomboro, I have the pre-cons getting delivered soon for Bloomboro. Super excited. Let's go. I finally hit infinite yesterday. Let's go, Ty Bree. Congratulations. That's amazing. Love to hear that. Uh, I'm going to hit him with the leech. I don't think they're going to have a lot of six cost cards, but they might have Ultron. So now leech only hits their six cost cards. He got nerfed for the sins of RSM. I feel like Doom is just good value here too. Bam. We can do Blue Marvel next turn. Doom. So this isn't my leech. This was created by RSM. So I'm just playing on curve, all right? Don't don't hate me. Wait a minute. Okay, we would we would swap Doctor Doom out for RSM, which isn't the worst thing in the world. I can also swap Blue Marvel for something. So I think I do that. I do Blue Marvel and then I play Copycat, which copied their Blink. Interesting. See, I'm still learning a lot about uh, Magic: The Gathering. I've been playing. I've been enjoying blue and black and blue and red decks. I just enjoy blue decks in general. Do I like the leech nerf? Yes, a lot. I very much like the leech nerf. I feel like it was pretty much needed. Drop the copycat. Does it, who does this hit? This would hit. Why doesn't Surfer show who he's going to hit? I feel like that should be a thing. So Surfer's going to hit copycat. It's going to also hit Black Swan because they're three cost cards. Copycat swaps out Blue Marvel for Magneto. Huge. Silver Surfer. They got Sentry. Linger for far too long. This deck is feeling pretty strong. Yeah, no, I am the biggest Leech Hater. I'm still the biggest Leech Hater, but I am less so of a Leech Hater now that he has been nerfed. Yes? Question mark? I've been seeing a lot of people using Juggernaut more recently. We hit their Swarm. I mean, this is just good because we can play a lot of cards here. Question mark? They have Dakin. You're just going to have to see the movie for yourself, Colt. I would never spoil that for you. Nah, I just like Sunspot getting the extra. Yeah, no spoilers, y'all. People are still watching. I say at least give it like between two weeks and a month before you start talking about it within chats and whatnot. Just to be respectful. We could do the Shadow King play. Maybe we save that for last. I think Shadow King may be the way to do it here. Meek. Dracula. Okay. Taking that into consideration means we can Shadow King and War Machine. And I believe we should win that. Copycat's base is five. So we win by quite a lot over there. Modoc is not going to cover it here unless they have Proxima Midnight. In which case, Proxima Midnight would definitely come over here. Now we got him. We absolutely got him. Shadow King for the win, baby. Victory. Also, shout out to Panda. Panda is the reason that I have this sick Shadow King variant. Thank you once again, homie. <laughs> At this point, it's just annoying. Like, it's scratchy and not fun. We do maintain Pryo. What's up, Jolene? Welcome on in. How you doing, friend? That's one nerdum I have not gotten into. There is a lot of lore with Warhammer. Mockingbird. I also love that we have Miss Marvel. Like, bam. Okay, I feel like this is snappable. Because we have Vision. I'm snapping on this. Absolutely snapping on this. Friendly neighborhood Spider -Man here. Good, no clog. The only sad thing is Miss Marvel's not going to go off because... We have two of these here. So we are going to vision. But they are going to get the buffs over here. Sparkly. 
Doesn't matter where we put it. Doesn't matter where we put... Doesn't matter where we put Doom. It's going to be five across either way. Yeah, wouldn't have mattered because Doom spreads across evenly. A Squirtle Squad I can do. Squirtle Sacks, y'all, not Squirtle Squad. We are the future. We still win. We still win. I no lie. I did not lie. Oh, damn. You still, dude, once I got all of the stuff on the Bubs leaderboard, or all of the Bubs for the reward track, I don't really do the Dipples Diner anymore unless I just want to give Bubs out to the community. I've just been giving my Bubs when I have extra time to do so. Just want the best Bubs tag. Speaking of best Bubs, they got the Deadpool. A lot of Destroy lists too. I've been seeing Move and Destroy a lot. I think as part of the, the missions that we're getting, as part of Alliances. Because I could do this. Go do your work, Lurk. Appreciate you, Panda. Lots of discard, too. I feel like discard is pretty solid right now. I definitely need to change my underwear. I'll take that all day, every day. I'm thinking Storm here. If we win this lane, we can crossbones into it. Potentially. Win. And the fact that we have a life is also fantastic. I'm, I don't really care about this lane. We just need to win two. You know what I mean? Well, see now. Okay. This is snappable right here. Snap, crackle, pop, y'all. So they can't get into this lane either. Ooh. Okay, Taskmaster here, and then Elioth last turn, and it's game over. Right, Squirtle? Deadpool, Venom. That's awesome. Show me Arnim Zola. Show me Arnim Zola, because I have Pryo, and Elioth just says no. That is Arnim Zola right there. Show me Zola. Thing while I also have a Ricola in my mouth and I took some emergency. I want this sore throat to go away. It actually kind of is. It doesn't hurt as bad as it did this morning. Well, that's yummy. I like that. The uh, change on Shadow King was very, very close. Tea with honey. Maybe I should do that. I don't think it's strep throat. At least I hope it's not strep throat. We hit their Corvus. They're playing... No, they're playing Arshim as well. Interesting. So what we could do... We'll do that, and then we can play Copycat into that lane so we don't have to worry about Corvus. That may be the way to go. Tea with Honey sounds pretty good. Not gonna lie. Live from the Daily Bugle. Kang, the Conqueror. I don't think I've ever seen this variant. OJ Kang variant. Dude looks like he has a massive head. Look at that dome on this guy. Bro's got a massive dome. DJ, not OJ? No, it was OJ. OJ did it. See what I did there? Wonderful. Oh, hell yeah. Cannabis enthusiast as well? Hell yeah. Uh, I am also a cannabis advocate, but I do it less so just because it can affect work, but I do love to unwind with it every once in a while. Jack with honey? On the weekend, yes. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it, Ryan. The orange juice Kang variant, yes. Uh, well, if we doom, we clog ourselves, which, dude, let's do the mind game here and see where they play because we can Eliath next turn. I mean, we can. That's always an option to talk about. Swongers and then Wolverine. And then Makari, okay. I've played this person before. Their name is Eliath Apologist, which is good because we know they're going to Wong over there. They might move their Wong and then do... Well, no, they wouldn't move their Wong. They have to play there. 
Let's do that. I guess the thing is we want to take Pryo if we can. So let's go mid. Let's go for a hard... They do the exact same play. Fantastic. Which means we take Pryo here. Which is exactly what I wanted. There's no reason for them to move Wong. Interesting that Makari moved though. Makari's like, no, I got gotcha. you. You thought, you thought, nerd. No. Yes, I can. Boom. Did that stop the Kang from going off? Dude, it stopped the Kang from going off. That's so funny. That's hilarious. Elias just said, no, you're done. What if... Does it work better for you if I stream earlier during the week? What if I streamed at like noon tomorrow when the new season starts? Would you prefer that to me streaming at four from going from four to eight instead, instead going from like noon to noon to four? Give me your feedback. Let me know. Thank you for the follows, y'all. It is very much appreciated. Like if work alerts work better for you, I have no problem going earlier. I could do the gym before I end up doing whatever I'm doing for stream. Well, we still have claw, so we can still get in there. Angela's still kind of small. Cool. I'll stay for at least two. Am I going to hit first day infinite? I could try. Iron Lad. Hell yeah. Other Northwesters. Love that. That's also huge for us. So Mikey says four to eight. We can keep it four to eight. Kind of want to keep the claw hidden. The idea of settling down doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world to me. Proxima goes there. Okay, we guarantee we win that lane. So this is where we snap back at them. Exactly, Ryan. That's the thing. Like, I don't care if I make a lot of money or not. As long as I can cover the cost of living expenses, I don't care about having, like, excess money. Like, this is the thing that brings me joy. This is the thing that people have told me. Hey, Greg, are you doing this thing? Makes my day better. And that's enough for me, you know? Boom. So, I don't know. If this becomes, like, a the full-time thing, which I'm hoping it does, this is definitely the thing I want to keep doing. So, we're winning there. I think we just drop a life and we call it a day. I think they realized they just lost the claw. I did. Yes, I got the claw variant. Exactly. If you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, a good... It's a very good thing that those buffaloes have wings over there if it was just hit by a tornado. Victory. As long as I can live comfortably and with agency. Those are the big things. And I'm doing something I enjoy. That's the big thing. Everybody, please clap for the pun that I just did because that was a good pun. Like, my parents have done so much for me and supporting me with this dream that I have of streaming full-time and making this a career. I would love to be able to give back to them as well as the community, which I am in the process of doing. I try to give back to the community as much as I can by doing, like, like what we're doing with the alliances. We're doing rewards for people who come in. Uh, like, we're doing gold pass giveaways and we're doing season pass giveaways. But also, uh, we're doing the Nico into Ebony Ma. Yes. Being able to uh, take care of my parents at old age is awesome and would be like my is the dream from this you know being able to get back to them good afternoon nick how are you doing homie do we like the wave play here so we already have four gladiator they're gonna come back wave is the best play we could do here what i could do though which i don't hate is destroyer so they all come back at valley of the hand i actually really like that so we get wave and nico back you're gonna meet nick the day before he goes to snapcon heck yeah that's awesome That Spectrum was way too early. That was too early, dude. Because now I can Doom. Actually, better. I'm better off doing Vision this turn. Because then I can at least move. Because we're going to get two revived after this turn. Armor. Avengers! Captain America. And that's fine. And we're going to be able to fill out all of those lanes. And I'll be able to do Agent Coulson as well. So let's do Vision here. Doctor Doom for four. And then we play, I am Groot. I feel like Groot's a good play here. That'll fill up every lane. I think we just win. Yep, I knew they wanted the Ant-Man buff. So just being able to tell, to read where they would get the most benefit and using that to your advantage. So I knew they wanted to do that there. 
Nope. Falls under between the Doombot and the Vision. We were able to spread that power across. We were able to go wide with it. That was a beautiful play. That is what we want to see. It's wild as we're getting very close to 2,800 followers. Who did we hit? We hit their Colleen Wing. They're allowed to be, though. He goes out and about in the backyard. He does. He gets all of his exercise outside. But he's a nocturnal animal, so most cats sleep during the day. He nocturnal. Mmm, you're getting the cold shoulder today. So we lose our Shadow King. I'm okay with it. I'm cool with that, too. Because we're going to be able to play Vision with Chimichanga. Stature Forge. So their list is interesting. Let's get Vision out this turn. Yeah, I think that's definitely the play we want. Sebastian Shaw. Uh-oh. They done messed up with that. Because we're just gonna we're gonna hit him with the old Shang-Chi next turn. I think we snap on that. That is snappable in my mind. Boom. Show me what you got, homie. Unless you drop some armor or something. You're losing that side. And we're able to spread across our power with Doom and drop a Scorpion next turn. So let's do that, that. So that's going to put us at... You know what? I'm fine with that. I feel like that was pretty big. I feel like that was a big play for us. Also, Chuck, I didn't see when you did that, but thank you for sending the team bracelets. I appreciate it, homie. Okay. Nope. Victory. Hello again, friend of a friend. We're doing pretty good. What is up, Okinawa? How you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. It's good to see you. No, we've been doing good overall. Copycat hit their cable. That's actually really good for us. This is a spotlight cache. Look at this dome, y'all. Good morning, just woke up. Good morning to you. I'm going to take off the drops. Jubilee here. Jubilee's not a bad play. I think based off of our curve, because that's going to lower the cost of Mockingbird here. Loki, let's go. New Loki, so it pulls directly from their deck. Wage. They got Hydra Bob. I Another Loki? Okay. I'm very confused right now. Well, let's drop Mockingbird. Let's drop another Loki. So we have two Lokis in play right now. We're about to find out. I also have questions. There's their Quinjet. I, so we get a copy of their opening hand. So we're just getting multiple copycats. So it doesn't look like it lowers it. Collector is every time enters your hand anywhere except for your deck plus one power. So we're guaranteed to get value from that. I'm going to hold out on the last play just because we want to leave stuff open. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. So let's get Collector as much of a buff as he can. Dude, we have another Collector too. We have two Collectors at this point. Agent Coulson, Agent Coulson, Snowguard. We're at three right now. So Agent Coulson gets us a four and a five cost. So that's two. So we would get... So we're going to fill the hand either way. Let's see how this goes. Or actually, hold on. Collector, Agent Coulson, Snowguard is a better play. Because they're going to keep getting buff from these other... We'll see how this goes. Boom. Victory.
Again, we have Loki on three, which is pretty solid. We hit their Stagron, which is also pretty big. I'm going to Loki here. We're going to move to Stark Tower. Mm-hmm. We have Shadow King for their Craven. Oh, my God. Or we also get the value of Craven. I'm also cool with that. Is Loki still viable? Yes, within Arashem. I feel like it was a buff for Arashem overall. So that's going to move with Stagron. I like this for two reasons. This is really good, y'all. Because you could play Loki on turn two, which is insane. Boom. Well, Blob needed the killing the first time for sure. Loki is a buff for an Arshim because you make the Arshim deck smaller. Oh, you're absolutely right. You are. I didn't realize that. Yeah, lowers. It makes it so Magneto isn't a, sorry, not Mito, Darkhawk isn't a counter anymore. I didn't even think about that. That's brilliant. So we can move that over there. I still am not a huge fan of Loki. I don't like the idea of just stealing somebody's hand or their deck, you know, at a advantage. This deck is strong. Okay, that's actually even bigger for us because now all of these cards get buffed by Kunlun. And no, hold up. Yeah, so now all of them have buffs. Part of me just wants to do this, Kingpin. So any cards that they move there, they just lose. They're kind of stuck here at this point. I've already snapped, so we're already in a good spot. This is fantastic for us. And Thanos falls below Shang-Chi range. They also Kingpin and Polaris, which brings RJCK. Welcome on in. Thank you for the follow. Um, But I could just Shadow King, right? They have priority. So what I think is going to happen is this. I think they're going to Heimdall and move all their characters to that side. I can at least move the Nocturne and make sure that they get hit with the negative. They're at 11 right now. They would get a buff from that. So let's move this here and then maybe Nightcrawler over here. Magneto's pretty big. Let's see how this goes. The fact that we moved Nocturne. Okay, we both moved Nocturne. And that, dude, our Craven is getting so freaking big. We they Magneto? Future. Okay. We Magneto. We, are the future. we hit them. Subterranea. Shadow King pops off. We win there. Shadow King for the win. Shadow King for the heckin' win. The four cuber. But if you're able to give me more information, Bakanawa, I can help you. Definitely can provide some assistance. What deck do you like the most? What does Arashem do? At the start of the game, plus one max energy, shuffle 12 random cards into your deck. Hey, we hit their Cassandra Nova. Huge value there. I'll put out Yellow Jacket. Is that people don't retreat usually by... I usually know if I want to stay or leave by turn th by turn three or turn four. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, do I like the matchup? Do I like the locations? Do I think the locations favor me or do they hurt me? Does my opponent have an advantage with their deck and the locations that they have available? And by turn three or four, I will usually have a strong idea if I want to stay or retreat. Have they snapped yet? If they've snapped, I will probably retreat if I think I'm going to lose. I'm trying to go back to my old faithful Tribunal deck. Dude, I think Tribunal's pretty strong right now. I think that is a legitimate strategy. This is a hand buff deck for sure. Probably running Silver Surfer. I do like the Doom here. Boom, spread that across. Cassandra Nova is specifically really good against Arashem. I love Kazoo, yes. Uh, Zoo was one of the first deck types I learned how to play. And I'm looking forward to Zoo with Marvel Boy. I might, I'm probably going to take Marvel Boy to Infinite this season, the new season. That's my goal anyways. So, are the cards that we have so far, I like Iron Man here. I'm going to hold on to the Shang-Chi, but what I could do is I could Valkyrie Shadow King, which is very strong. Opponent snapped. It is your funeral. Exactly. Nobody is expecting Tribunal right now. But for decks that I really enjoy, I enjoy combo style decks. So Tribunal, even like bounce decks, negative lists, any deck where I could build a really cool combo to get that win. Surfer, negative. Oh, I didn't end my turn. That's why. I am Iron Man. What do they got? Brood. 
Killmonger. Cool. So here is my play here. I am going to drop Valkyrie Shadow King. And then I'm going to move Vision over here. I know it lowers Doom bots, but it also makes Iron Man more. I think we just win with it. Exactly. Yeah, negative list. Who are you hitting? I think we're still fine for the most part. 18 power. We still win that. We still win that. Still got them. I was expecting Surfer for sure. My family line comes from the French, French Canadias before they uh, migrated down to the US of A's. So I'm mostly French Canadian. Yes, Hugh Jackman is Australian. 100%. How do you think he gets so strong? He fights all of those snakes and whatnot. Interesting. He was, okay, so he was born in Lebanon, grew up in Canada. Have you ever tried Vegemite? I have not. I hear it's salty and you should only do a little bit of it when you do it. Profax is not the worst thing in the world here. Wind, aid my hand. Interesting. Well, we have other ways to get into that lane. I would rather go for the lockdown here and just be like, no. I believe it. Copycat Tribunal sounds like a fun time. We beat them. We both can't play into that lane. And we have Pryo going into this. So I just drop a Lyoth last turn. I appreciate the lurk, homie. I hope you're having a fantastic day, Zill. Nope, because we have Pryo going into this. We just drop a Lyoth and that's game. I decided to watch Logan after watching Deadpool and Wolverine. I've been lazy, but dude, not being lazy. That's self-care, man. Lazy isn't a thing. You're recharging your batteries and recharging your batteries is productive. All right. Boom. As a person who is autistic with ADHD, I've been told I've been lazy my entire life, but I'm not. My brain just works differently. And sometimes I just need to recharge and that is valid. So if it's a day where you just watch a TV show, you binge watch TV show, or you, you know, whatever you need to do for self-care, take care of yourself. I actually had to repeat kindergarten because of it. Uh, and then I didn't learn I was autistic until later. And I'm like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. That's why I don't understand when people are flirting with me. That's why eye contact is so hard. That's why I have all of these hyper obsessions with comic books, with manga, with all of these things. It just clicked, you know? That's the thing. I'm procrastinating on watching TV shows. Dude, I feel that. I need to get caught up on One Piece. I need to get caught up on a bunch of stuff. There's so many good recommendations. Exactly. Your brain just works differently and you figure out what works with you. You're not allowed to get it. At well, I think for self-diagnosis, so there are a lot of things that prevent people from getting diagnosis. A lot of the times you have, it costs a lot of money. Uh, there are barriers uh, that, have to, that come with privilege. I think self-diagnosis can be valid, you know? Yeah, there are a lot of obstacles to getting a actual diagnosis. And also there's biases, you know? That is a huge Cassandra Nova. 100%. I do like the blue Marvel at Onslaught Citadel though. That's gonna be nasty. Nasty. Okay, our copycat hit there. Odin. All right. There you go. The thing is, I find that a lot of people within the Twitch and the, like, the gaming community have a lot of overlap. There's a reason that we, games make sense to us. Uh, a lot of the times, like, video games made more sense to me than real world stuff because video games make sense logically. Like, there's rules that you follow. There are things that logically work the way that they do, and it just works with my brain. You know what I mean? So let's drop the blue marble here. Like, that is why I like this game so much, is because it's logic-based. Like, and it's strategy, and, and my brain just likes these kind of things. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. What do you have in this Arshim deck? I will show you. What go decks go well with Captain Marvel control decks? So decks where you can lock down stuff and then Captain Marvel can swing in and get you the win at the end. So they get the extra energy. That's not a huge deal. Interesting. 
So definitely the the Marvel stuff got me into Snap because I love Marvel. It was one of my like fixations. X-Men was one of my earliest hyper obsessions as a kid. Okay, they're about to do something. We could do Odin that will have this go off a second time. I'm kind of afraid of whatever they're about to drop on us. Iron Lad's gonna hit something. So let's hope it hits. We're gonna get a copy. Did we Loki? We didn't Loki. So there's a chance we hit a Lyoth. Heart of the cards. Let me think about it, bro. Let me think about it, okay? Are ye worthy? Boom. Doom, rules all. Doom spreads. Please hit Goliath. Orca. Okay. What do they got? They have to beat 23 in every lane. That is... Nope. They got nothing. Devilish. Welcome on in, homie. That's what I'm saying. So child labor is fine if they're superheroes. Got it. Auto mod sometimes doesn't like certain things. His dad was a nuclear scientist. Wait, Xavier's dad was a nuclear scientist? So there are some auto mod settings. It doesn't like certain words. So we'll be able to do scroll into blink. Do you think Nomura deck is good? Yeah, Nomura is very strong. No, I get what you're saying, though. Like, yes, you are correct. I'm j My point is Charles Xavier is not a good person at all. Yes. Killmonger doesn't hit anybody. Then we blink out, scroll for something bigger. And you know what? Kitty Pride is one of my favorite ones too. I love Kitty Pride. Uh, Kitty Pride, Nightcrawler. Mystique is also awesome. Yes, he's down. Dude, I respect Cyclops so much more than I do Professor X. Hmm. I love the X-Men Evolution. I grew up on X-Men Evolution. X-Men Evolution was awesome. I think we go Magneto here. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. Double Magnetos? Yo, thank you for the follow. Welcome on in. We are the future. So we tie there. An exact tie there. I think we just, we have Pryo here. We just drop Eliath. And then that's game, right? I hope X-Men Evolution gets the X-Men 97 treatment. Needs to continue the story. Dude, I loved X-Men Evolution. I remember staying up. Dude, remember Static Shock too? Static Shock was dope. Yes, I'm actually rereading that right now. And we landed the fart. We definitely win that. Static Shock was dope. Static Shock was so good. Yep. Looking back, though, the frog was kind of racist. Y'all remember the WB frog? Does not look great going back and seeing the little WB frog. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. Y'all, thank you for all the follows. I hope you're enjoying the convo. Frog, is this an American thing? Wait, did you not have the WB frog? Dude, we had a this we had a WB frog that was like very much what is the word I'm looking for? It was racist. It was a racist little frog that would be like, the WB. That's what he would do. Yes, I also, yes, minstrelly. That's the word. Yes. Uh, okay, we can't, let's get Jeff out here. Basically, there was a little frog that would do his little dance thing and sing his little song before WB stuff happened. Is his name Michigan J Frog? Is that really his name? I also saw the AO, uh, the AO thing. She's like, she was a Nepo baby and her dad was the WB frog. Okay, we got vision. We have two visions right now. Double vision. Early Bugs Bunny was a little rough too sometimes. Yes. Yeah, things don't age well. Specifically cartoon wise. Like a, a lot of old Disney stuff did not age well. Like the aristocrats, the aristocats. The Siamese cats were extremely racist. 
Okay, cool. I'm gonna be learning about the frog. You had the crows in Dumbo. Mickey Mouse was straight up a blackface character. I did not know that part. Dagger is gonna get a big buff from that. I think we Doctor Doom. We can also we can move any of these cards if we want to. They also move. Yep. Doom rules all. I'm glad that things are better today, and that that's no longer a common thing. Dude, Dagger is gonna get so freaking big. Our Dagger's bigger. And the thing is, they can no longer Heimdall here. And we can still move all of our guys. We could go bam, bam. 33 is pretty dang big. Hold on. Wait a minute. Dude, we can make it bigger. We can make it bigger. Because so that's going to move the dagger. Hold on. How do we want to do this? Probably like this, gentlemen. That's going to move both of these over there. This is going to be insane, y'all. Dagger is going to get absolutely massive. Craven. Nope. I think this is the biggest dagger I've ever hit. Victory. Hold on. 33 power dagger. Not too shabby. Thank you all for watching. If you made it to the end, I super appreciate it. You're helping us get those watch hours up so we can apply for you to partner. I hope you enjoyed the deck guide. Let me know your thoughts. If there were things that I could have done better, I do appreciate any and all feedback as long as it is constructive. If you have not yet, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, do all the things so it pushes the video out to more people. If I do not see you the rest of the week, please remember to take care of yourself. Remember to eat food, drink water, take your meds, get enough sleep, and remember the world is better with you in it. I will try to get another deck guide out this week, hopefully. No promises, but we will see what happens. I'll catch you next time, friends.